Hello, in this lecture we'll take a look at chapter 23, Flexible Budgets and Standard Costs. So the budgetary control and reporting. So the budgetary process will be the system of implementing the budget. So we're going to implement a budget which is basically a plan and that's going to be the development, the budget from the planning objectives. Then we're going to run the actual process. Once it's been completed, we're then going to compare the actual to the budget and analyze any differences. So we're going to make a budget, we're going to make a plan, we're going to uh, run the business, then we're going to compare the plan that we thought was going to happen to the actual budget, and then once that has happened, we can take corrective action at that time, and then of course make a new budget and a new plan. So that will be the continual process of any type of business. It's, it's a continuing process. It's going to be, of course, like anything, the journey, not really a destination here. So we're going to continually budget. We're going to run it. We're going to compare the budget to the actual. We're going to see if we need to take any corrective action. Then we'll run it again. So if we have a fixed budget performance report, look something like this. We're going to start with a fixed budget report and then talk about the ideas on making that fixed budget a flexible budget. So if we think about a budget in this terms, we're going to say the fixed budget has 10,000 units. That's how many units we think that we are going to produce. So if we produce 10,000 units, we're going to get in dollars uh, 100,000. And then the cost of goods sold is 49,000. The selling expense is 13. And the general administrative 26. Therefore, we have total expenses of 88. The, the sales price minus the expenses given us 12,000. 12, That's the budget. What actually happened? We sold 12,000 units. So units were higher. We sold 2,000 more than expected. Therefore, our sales are greater. We have a favorable difference. 125 minus the budget of 100. That's good. Sales went up. But what happened here? The cost of goods sold, we budgeted to be 49,000 and we spent 58.1 for an unfavorable difference of 9.1. What happened here? Selling expenses 13 is what we budgeted. It's higher at 15.1. We paid more for selling expenses of 2.1. Unfavorable difference. General administrative, we see the same thing here. And then the total expenses are here and our net income is here. So our net income is higher. Our sales are higher. But our expenses look like they are all uh, worse off. But, of course, if we think about that, uh, we'd say, well, that's because we sold 2,000 more units. So, I mean, the cost of the things we sold clearly is going to go up if we thought that we were only going to sell 10,000 and we sold 12,000. And that, of course, is the difference that we need to take a look at. We need to think about that. Well, how can we make these numbers uh, be more reasonable based on the new level of sale? And that's going to be the idea of the flexible budget. So a flexible budget show revenues and expenses that should have occurred at any activity level. So we're going to adjust the budget and the expenses to adjust to what we would expect to happen at different types of sales levels, activity level. Maybe prepared for any activity level in a relevant range. Reveal variances due to good cost control or lack of cost control. So that's our goal. We want to basically make measurements and say, that, what is this difference happening here? Why is it happening? Is it because of good or bad cost control? And then take corrective action if it's bad. <laughs> Improve performance evaluation. All right, so we got preparation of the flexible budget. To flex a budget for different activity levels, we must know how costs behave with changes in activity levels. So. To do that, we're going to get, go through this idea of variable costs versus fixed costs. And that's going to be a huge idea when we talk about managerial accounting. These costs behave differently. And uh, there's sometimes when we want to put both of those costs into the product and try to figure out how much the total cost of something is, including all costs. And there's other times when we really want to break out the variable portion and the fixed portion so that we can analyze them separately. And that's basically what we're going to do here. We're going to break out the variable portion and the fixed portion in separate areas so that we can analyze them separately based on different budgetary uh, outcomes on production level. So we know that variable costs go up as um, the production level goes up. So if we're talking about things that go into the production like direct materials and we sell more of the product, then those direct materials are going to go up at a constant rate as opposed to fixed costs that stay constant no matter how many we sell. So note what happens when we, when we sell more or less, these two things are behaving differently. So the variable costs are going to go up 
at a constant level, the fixed cost as we be, as we produce more things, the fixed cost per unit actually goes down. And so because of that distinction, we kind of want to break those out in something like this, where we have the uh, flexible budget, we have the sales, we think they're going to be $10, we're going to sell them for $10. And if we sell 10,000, 12,000, 14,000, then we'd have sales of 100, 120, and 140. And we can make any scenario we want now. Th those are just some estimates that we'll make in the budget. And now we can make different types of budgetary estimates based on this. We could say, well, we think we're going to sell between 10 and 14. What if that happened? What if we sold 10? What if we sold 12? What if we sold 14? Obviously, we can see clearly what our revenue would be, but we should also be able to see pretty clearly what our expenses should be at those two different levels if we break out the variable portion and the fixed portion. So, for example, the variable costs, the ones that change evenly, constantly with the levels of production, we're saying are changing at $4.80. So if we multiply that times 10,000 units, then we've got 48,000. Then we have the contribution margin of the 100 minus the 48, 52, which also equals the unit contribution margin, $10 unit sale minus 480 unit sales, 520 unit sales times the 10,000 unit sales. So this will be a common way to look at data when we are trying to make managerial decisions. We'll break out the variable portion either in a per unit or uh, in a total method, come up with a contribution margin, sales minus variable costs, and then see if that is big enough or how much it clears the fixed costs, which are something like the rent, which stays the same. So, you know, 40,000, 40,000, 40,000. So it does not change with the level of production. And then, of course, we can do the same thing for 12,000 units. 10 times 12,000 gives us the 120. The 4.8 changing in constant with the unit of production times 12,000, 57.6. The 120 minus the 57.6 gives us the contribution margin. 62.4 and we could subtract that uh, less the fixed costs which stay at 40. We can do a similar calculation for the 14 and so on any kind of estimate that we have. Then if we were to uh, flexible budget performance report then we're going to run the thing of course and now we're going to see what actually happened and we're going to compare the performance report to the budget that that applies and in this case we sold 12,000 units so after we ran this we sold 12,000 we sold the one in the middle and therefore that's the one we're going to use to do the analysis after the time period has happened so the budget would be the ten thousand ten dollars times the 12,000 units over the 120 we thought it would cost 480 times 12 the 57 and the sales that actually happened were higher by 125 so we actually had higher sales of 5,000 and then we had the um, actual at that level 57.6 less the uh, 59 was actually still higher by 1,800 but now we're comparing apples to apples we're not comparing uh, the total revenue as if we thought we were going to sell 10,000 units so we have a difference of 1,008 and so we have a total favorable contribution margin of 3,002 and if we compare the fixed cost, we're saying we're paid 200 more on the fixed cost, things like the rent or whatnot. And so we have an unfavorable difference there, and that would be our variance analysis. Then we can go down and break into this number. It's probably the one we're going to look at and say, well, why is that one different? Uh, should we make an adjustment for the future? Is that a significant number or is that uh, immaterial? Uh, we might look at the favorable differences as well, go in there and say, well, what are we missing on these? any substantial difference whether it be favorable or not if it's too favorable then maybe we are not uh, doing the correct calculations and maybe we should be shooting for a, a better outcome 